Hello, a very good afternoon to all the participants. Uh, welcome to a unique program on career guidance on programming organized by Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering with uh, in association with CIII, STM CET, Darwad. Today, we have uh, two excellent resource persons to interact with us. One is Professor Dr. S.S. Nawalgun, sir, and Professor Shrikan Sirkol, sir. The first one hour is on uh, career guidance by S.S. Nawalgun, sir. And second one hour will be a talk on uh, the guidance with respect to programming by Professor Shrikan Sirkol, sir. So before handing over this session to the Nawalgun, sir, I have a, a small request with you all. A few, few housekeeping rules here. Audience, you are requested to post your doubts at the end of this session. And uh, uh, you cannot interact with the uh, uh, Professor uh, Nawalgun, sir, or Professor Shrikan, sir. You can only give your uh, comments, or if you have any doubts, please put it in the chat box. Later on, at the end of the session, all of your doubts are going to be addressed. Now, I request Nawalgun sir to continue the session. Over to you, sir. Okay, thank you, Kotresh. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Okay, so we get started. Uh, thank you very much once again. Uh, good afternoon to one and all, all the students out there. It's been a different uh, experience for all of us for the last few months. Uh, we have been talking to you online, uh, not being able to meet uh, face to face. This is a new way of learning and teaching. So <clears throat> today we are here to talk about uh, career guidance tips in programming. Uh, this program must be seen as a precursor to another program which we are going to do on exploring pointers in C. This program is going to act as a context setting program for the days to come. The roadmap for today's uh, session is as follows. First of all, we will start with the introduction to programming and let us have a look at different careers possible in programming and what are the different types of coding standards we have and what are the common pitfalls or errors that we commit and what can be possible tips for success. This will be followed by a summary. All of us know about uh, what programming is all about. So when I ask you to write the program for finding, let us say, a factorial of a number, uh, please tell me, do I code or do I write a program? Well, there is a very fine line of difference between programming and coding. But in today's session, let me just try to use these two terms interchangeably. Uh, Professor Shrikant will be able to uh, throw more light on these two aspects a little later on. So all of us know that programming is basically um, the execution of a set of instructions that we tell the compiler to uh, work on. That means if I have a problem statement at hand, I must be able to write a syntax with the help of which the computer is able to perform certain operations and hence get me the solution. This is very, very basic. In fact, we also know that programming basically consists of two types of uh, paradigms. First one is using an interpreter and second one is by using a compiler. Compiler, all of us are quite familiar with. For example, we have a C compiler or C++ compiler and so on and so forth. What the compiler does is it tries to look at the syntax mistakes throughout the length of the program and issues warnings and errors, if any. So I can proceed with the execution of the program if and only if the complete program is error free. The case of interpreter is quite different. An interpreter executes line by line. For example, if I have 10 lines of code and if the first seven lines of code are perfectly okay, they are executed one by one and the execution stops at the eighth statement or eighth line because it is an error. So when I look at compiler versus interpreter, they are two different paradigms in terms of executing the codes. So basically we are trying to talk about how one can have different types of uh, careers in programming. Well, 
the uh, designations can be very different the type of job one can do are very different for example one can be a web developer in web development field a mobile app developer or a database administrator or a software qa or quality assurance engineer or software developer well we have seen the term software developer being used uh, quite frequently uh, meaning a person who can develop a software for a given problem definition all the above statement stated uh, examples or designations can be taken as a slight deviation of the loosely defined term software developer obviously when i talk of web development we have the set of people who are experts in developing applications with respect to the internet when we look at mobile app developers we have specialists who can develop solutions or games or any uh, amusement related uh, softwares on mobile platform database administrators they also comprise of a very very important category of people in the field of software development uh, who can control and configure the different systems at hand software quality assurance engineers or developers or programmers can be thought of as people who try to detect and correct bugs a software developer on the other hand can be uh, described from different perspectives in today's session <clears throat> let me focus on the last term which is software developer in fact there are different uh, varieties of designations possible uh, if you look at the software development one can be a systems software engineer or software developer and the other person can be an applications uh, software developer or software engineer well this particular session is based on the systems software developer or systems software engineer so i'm just going to give you some important uh, hints or tips regarding what can be possible ways of uh, becoming a good software developer in the field of systems engineering field now just to give an example a system software developer is a person who basically employs c or c++ language and works closely with the hardware for the purpose of realizing a solution but when i'm working with uh, application software developer they are the people who write wrappers and functionalities are going to be built around these uh, wrappers now a major important uh, part of uh, a software career is a coding standard so i'm just going to have a very quick look at what a coding standard looks like and let's see if we can answer these questions okay uh, do we know any coding standards what do you mean by m i s r a well if you know the answer very good otherwise don't worry i'm going to discuss them a little later on first of all let's talk about coding standards uh, the first question is why do we need a, need a coding standard in fact it is very uh, implicit to understand that a coding standard defines the standard for the way in which you develop software solutions so why do we need one the first and the foremost uh, reason for doing this is uniform appearance can be given to the codes written by different engineers it's a well known fact that a complex real life example requires many people to write different parts of the code and finally integrate each of them for realizing the final solution so when many people are working on the same project do we have any compatibility in terms of variable names module inputs outputs their behaviors so on and so forth or at least in the worst possible case does the code written by different set of people does it look uniform so for the purpose of uniform appearance we need to go for a coding standard it also improves the readability of the code well the question is very simple why do we need readability the readability is needed because every single time a single person cannot work on the same project throughout his or her lifetime so there are different set of people at different time instances who work on the project so if i am supposed to understand what the other person has coded i need to go through it i need to read its documentation i need to also under, undergo a glimpse at the particular given code so hence readability is a major issue it also helps in terms of maintainability of the code 
that means as i was talking to you if the code is well maintained it is quite possible for any and every person to go through it and then make any modifications or try to bring out the next possible version debug is debugging is also easily um, you know used here because if you can understand the code you can always look at the possible places where the mistake can be and hence uh, debug it it also indicates a good programming practice and increases the efficiency of programmers well um, recently a survey was conducted a research study was conducted by a set of people uh, in uh, dutchland and then they conduct they concluded that it is quite possible for us to code the solutions effectively efficiently in the least possible time with least number of errors if one goes for coding standards the reference of this paper is given at the end so let us look at few coding standards one must have this is going to be a very very crucial uh, aspect of uh, uh, people when they face campus placement because writing a simple variable name like int i int j int k float m may not be just sufficient so a good coding standard will have an initial description initial description to each and every uh, file that we have in the project directory so this header to each and every file must have the module name the date of creation of module and who has written this particular module or the code and when was the last modification done and what were the earlier modifications done what about the functionality of the present module and what are the different functions supported in the module along with their input and output parameters a list of global variables accessed or modified by the module should also be included well this is obviously going to be the comment section that you see as a very huge chunk of a set of lines in the very beginning of each and every uh, header file each and every file there are also good number of uh, coding standards with respect to naming so we have naming practices it is a good programming practice to name local variables as shown here so this kind of naming convention is called camel case naming that means the first character will be a small letter and then the intermediate character will be capital letter because this is going to be the first letter of the second word so this is a kind of naming practice we must use for local variables and then for global variables the first character here is also in capital letters and if you are making use of any constant uh, data or constant uh, numbers then its name can appear in complete capital letters as shown here and it is also a very widely used practice to have the function names in camel case once again indentation is also an integral part of coding standard that means uh, if you have if statement or for statement or uh, switch case statement so on and so forth then appropriate spacing must be uh, used or left in terms of making the code more readable it's quite possible for you to write a cryptic code which becomes very very tough for anybody else to understand it but we don't want to do it parentheses are also very important because parentheses improve the readability of the code and do we need to use go to statement well go to statement usage simply implies that the logic of the program is not very well developed so if the logic is well developed then you need not make use of go to statement at all now how do i enforce all these coding standards the answer is static analyzers so these are the set of tools which can actually help you to analyze if you are sticking to a particular coding standard or not there are hundreds of static analyzers some of them are freely available and some are paid softwares that you can use to check if your code is all right or not so the flow is if i give you a code you write the code you write the code and then check for the um, compliance to coding standard if the compliance is not yet fully arrived at or if it is not done then you go back reiterate and make certain modifications to your code so that you get the output you check the syntax you check the semantics and then run the code 
once you run the code if the code is working fine well and good otherwise once again you need to come back and edit the code check for the coding syntax compliance if it is achieved good otherwise one once again we need to reiterate and then re-modify the code so that's the se sequence of uh, operations we have now coming back to the question like what is meant by m-i-s-r-a in, in short it, it can be pronounced as misra misra is basically one possible coding standard we can ha we have uh, around us misra stands for uh motor i just followed it okay motor um okay just give me a minute okay i guess i stands for interface software reliance association so there are uh, the misra guidelines for c language and for c plus language as well now there is one particular rule uh, for example rule 59 which states something like this the statement forming the body of an if else if else while do while or for statement shall always be enclosed in braces now this is one simple rule that we need to follow one simple guideline that we need to follow when you want to write the code for a given application now this is from uh, the 1998 version of uh, misra then we have rule 18.1 which says something like a pointer resulting from arithmetic on a pointer operand shall address an element of the same array as that of as that pointer operand so that means it basically imposes the way in which we need to uh, manipulate the different set of uh, uh, variables and operands one simple example i just want to give you now this is a simple if else statement now if some condition is being checked here in terms of the values of variable x y and z so if this condition is true then we open the flower bracket and return the true statement otherwise we return the false statement well what's so special about this code is the code wrong well the answer is no it's perfectly okay but do i use this kind of a code or do i go for different versions of the code like this i have just rewritten the same code once again i say if some condition is satisfied then we say return true else return false now i'm just trying to compress this further and we simply say return followed by the condition itself please note here there is no any parenthesis at all so the question is this do i go with the first version of the code or second version of the code or third version of the code now the answers can just depend some people may say that the first version is very long because it has all the opening parentheses and close because it is quite optimized well all three have their own pros and cons in fact the third one seems to be very optimal very compact but it is a little cryptic as well so maybe for a fresher programmer this can be a little hard to understand and debug if there are any errors the second version is somewhat easy to understand the first version seems to be a big waste of space because i i have written the parenthesis open parenthesis and close parenthesis for both true statement and else part of the statement called if so while the first version seems to be very lengthy and not compact this can be a very very explicit way of explaining things third version even if it appears to be very very compact it can have a very uh, elongated time of execution why because the point is the result of this condition checking is going to return either true or false values which are quite implicit to the code so sticking to coding standard doesn't necessarily mean that you need to optimize the code to such a level that it becomes very very hard to read and maintain and debug it just means that even if 
the codes are getting lengthier because of sticking to some set of rules if they can be quite explicit and easy to maintain and if they are portable one must go for it let us also look at some common pitfalls possible common pitfalls during the course of software development can be no consistent style so when i say no consistent style me the opening flower bracket on the same line in some places or on the next line in some other places then writing two big functions is also common pitfall one must avoid it is not a necessary you know a way of writing functions where you put all the functionalities into just one function and get the output well one can go for modular programming approach where functions interact the variables are passed return values are gathered and hence you get the solution then another common pitfall is writing the code without a plan by without a plan i mean uh, going for a non modular approach then another common pitfall can be non validating the user input now this is quite frequently seen when uh, uh, people write the software codes for uh, their terminal for example if the question is to find the factorial of a number we know that the factorial of a number let's say n is given by n into n minus 1 into it just goes on up till 1 so if the value of n is 0 now if i don't validate the user input then i simply get into an infinite loop so such common mistakes also do happen and they must be avoided at all cost mishandling an exception is one more common pitfall uh, we have by exception i mean any error condition that's quite possible in terms of uh, the user input now if there is an error what do we do that's called mishandling that's called handling of an exception but if you fail to properly deal with an error in input given by the user then it leads to disaster one more common mistake is not backing up the work that means we need to maintain the copies of our work we need to also maintain the history of how the things are modified how the source code is changed from time to time two tips for success first and the foremost thing is one must know the limits of oneself is it possible for somebody to venture into the systems systems area or applications area for the purpose of software development you need to visualize your goals and work towards them with a time frame in, in our minds always we should question things to get more clarity and we need not compare ourselves with anybody else balance independence and teamwork can be a good approach for succeeding and never ever hesitate to ask questions because when you ask questions you come to know about the answers for them so in summary um, software programming or coding can be an exciting field it can be challenging as well it has its own share of uh, uh, you know excitement it has its own share of uh, rewards and one must be prepared for them i have gone through this set of references for the purpose of this presentation along with this we can also expect uh, in the coming days a course on introduction to uh, pointers exploring pointers in c language that's going to start from tomorrow so the first day will be the basic introduction to c language and basics of pointers in c second day will see us discuss about pointer arithmetic and pointers and strings and also pointers and uh, arrays day 3 will be uh, dedicated to the most favorable questions in placement activities where the questions can be like uh, a pattern generation like a, a triangle or inverted triangle a set of uh, different patterns numbers pascals triangle uh, uh, armstrong numbers on and so forth day 4 will be dedicated to pointers and structures and pointers and uh, functions so um, this is what i just wanted to share with you if there are any questions then we'll take them and after this uh, professor shrikant will continue thank you so much do you have any questions okay
Okay, so if there are no questions, then I'll I think uh, I'll hand over the mic to Professor Shrikant for the necessary action. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Uh, it was a nice uh, information session, and uh, now I request Professor uh, Shirkol sir to continue with the second uh, session on uh, the. Guidance on programming. Over to Professor Srikant Shirkol, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Am I audible, sir? Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, students. I hope uh, everyone of you are doing well. So today we are uh, meeting on this uh, online platform, YouTube Live. And this is our first attempt on YouTube Live. Hope you're enjoying. The intentions of coming onto the YouTube Live is, there are two intentions behind it. One is you can watch it anytime. And but you cannot interact. That's that's one negative. That's why we uh, ask you to come on live and you can interact in live chat. Okay, we are happy to answer you. But answering will be done to your questions only at the end of the presentation. So I request all of the students to pose your post your questions then and there wherever you have a doubt and so that I can refer it after the end of my session. And second advantage of this YouTube live is you know, this consumes normally less data compared to other on online platforms. So to favor the students community, we have chosen YouTube Live. Hope you appreciate our attempt. To proceed with the session now, I first would like to thank Naul Gunsar for a wonderful session regarding guidance, career guidance tips for programming. Now, in the session two, what, what we planned is like before we go for exploring pointers in C, what I felt is we need to do some exercise called building the basics. You know, you might have learned C language in the very first year of your engineering, or you might have revised certain things in the days, uh, subsequent days. But still, what we felt is like revising or reviewing the basics of C program is utmost necessary in order to take the further courses in a more efficient way. Okay, so this one hour, 15 minutes, will be focusing on the basics and review of C programming. So you'll not be getting to uh, see any new things here, but the same old things, bit a different shade. Okay, so I have taken some teasing kind of questions, wherein that will make you to think in a different way. So that's the intention of us to take this review of C programming. Okay, so with this, I just want to start my session. So uh, you can even contact me with your doubts after the session to either in the comment section or else you can mail me. Uh, or these are the my these are my mail IDs. And also you can find my YouTube lecture series uh, where you are right now. Okay. So these are the references which I have made for preparation of the slides. Let us see by Ashwan Kanitkar, Programming with C by Kerning Ann and Dennis Ritchie. See the complete reference by Herbert Shield, a lot of websites and many things, some things I've learned by practice too. I recommend the last one for every one of us. These are the contents of the flow that I am taking in this session. We see the history, features, basic structure of C, operators, data types and type, type casting, memory, the important one, some loop statements, some special kind of statements that we have in C, arrays and strings in a very brief manner, even structures, unions, and enumerations. Of course, we have uh, not we are not covering conditional statements, thinking it is it to be very easy because you have learned it in your you know HDL language or most of the other languages. You have same if else kind of statements. I you know thought to ignore it. Functions and pointers. So these things in detail will be covering in the coming sessions from tomorrow. So before I start with history of C, let me just want you to um, make you aware that C, you know, it's been a long time C has been invented. So in 1970s, and now we are in 2020. It's been almost five decades. 
and still we are training C and you people are very curious to know about it, to attend it. And we are very curious to still teach the 50 year old C programming. The reason for it is it has got its own strength. And the recent popularity language popularity index says that C is continuously securing top five positions among the IT people who are based on the usages. Top five, you have to, you know, stress upon it. Okay, so it is still on demand. So I, I just, you know, one, one more time, I want to stress upon this that don't treat C language as a basic programming language and it is not, it is not much of use outside, but it is not so. Most of the modern tools have been developed by C script. So that's why it makes a very important language. So this is how the history of C goes. In 1960, the first computer language which used a block structure called Algol was introduced. The name was extracted from algorithms. In 1967, Martin Richards developed a language called BCPL, which stands for Basic Combined Programming Language. In 1970, Ken Thompson created a language called as B. Actually, this has been used to create earlier versions of Unix. You might be wondering, like, why I'm covering up the history of the C? Because as a placement coordinator of our department, I have seen some of the questions even concentrating on the history of the C as well. So that's why I just collected these information in front of you. Again, developed, uh, made some addition of the features to the C. And we we have a famous book called Kerning and Ritchie, who have uh, that book is you know very prevalent nowadays. Even I have referred to some, some extent. That book is good. Even I recommend it for you. In 1989, American National Standard Institute Committee standardized the C, and we call it henceforth as NCC. In 1990, even International Standard Organization Committee accepted it. In 1999, C99 standard came up and most of the features that we are utilizing of C are decided or added in C99. And recently, we have C11 and then C18 standardization, just a feature addition process. We will just see some features of C. C, as you know, it's a robust language. Programs written in C are efficient and fast compared to the languages that we have in the you know higher level high level languages i'm comparing it with high level languages why is it so it's just because of variety of data types and powerful operators that it has and it's highly portable i'm talking with respect to os you might you you can see c compilers in almost all os now even it is available in android you can download an online compiler of uh, C uh, app. So there also you can work with C. It's highly portable. And it is well suited for structured programming. Structured programming is a necessity. And the most important one is it is having an ability to extend itself. So it can extend itself. You can you know, build the additional features using the C language itself. That's the ability C has. And, and one more thing, to your surprise, C language has only 32 keywords. So naming some are int, float, char, and so on. So it, C is comprised of only 32 keywords. Before I proceed with the programming basics, I just want to make you aware the difference between coding versus programming. Why? Because being, you know, from electronics and electrical background, we might have learned VHDL or Verilog coding. So we were calling it as coding. Most, most oftenly we were calling it as coding. As, um, and C programming, we call it as C programming. There is one minor difference between it. Let us let us look into it. So I can call that coding as a subset of programming. Okay, so we normally use it as interchangeably nowadays, but there is a small difference. Coding is machine readable inputs, written, writing lines of codes and language and syntax. Whereas programming is, it, it's a whole set like creating and developing an, an executable machine program, debugging and testing, translating requirements and documentation review and analysis. These all comprises to be a C programming. So this is a difference. Now, what's a program in the simple words? It's a set of instructions which where, when carried out by a processor for some specific input generate specific output. For example, you want to do something or from your machine. So what do you do? You feed some set of instruction, what the processor wants to be done by you. 
So you just feed the input accordingly, it should generate the output. So that is what is called as program. And what is a programming language? Whenever we see, we say that it's a language, it's just as a common language that we used to speak, that we used to interact, English or Kannada or anything else. So wherein in the language that we speak, we you know interact between a person to person. Whereas in programming language, a person tries to interact with a machine. That's why we call it as programming language. And you know, like all our language has a grammar, we need to follow a grammar, right? So in that fashion, programming language are also uh, to be followed with some 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 rules. We call it as a specific manner, some predefined rules. So I can define programming language as a specific manner of writing a program with some predefined rules, symbols, and their use as a part of language. So you know the example of it. Now coming to the basic structure of C. Please don't ignore thinking that it is a very well known thing to you. So sometimes, you know, you commit the mistakes and the basics. Basics plays a very important role. I, I assure you that you will definitely appreciate this session while learning pointers in C. Okay, so we'll go with the basic structure of C. Documentation section is the first one. Link section, definition section, global declaration, main function and subroutines. In detail, we'll just throw some light on it. In documentation section, normally we call it as comment lines. And one more important thing I want to highlight here, comment lines are not executable statement, but you know, while writing comments, it can't be nested. Please understand, it can't be nested. You cannot have such comments, comment within a comment. And in the link section, it provides instructions to the compiler to link function from the system library. For example, hash include directory is your link function, link section. It is written in your link section. Hash, in, hash include stdi.h, it's a header file, wherein in this header file, there'll be a lot of functions written. And when you, for example, printf and scanf, when you include this header file in your program, those printf and scanf can be used. So it means whenever you call that function, it will fetch the code from this library. Now comes the definition section. Here, we normally use uppercase to define some constants. Wherever you use this particular definition, it will be replaced by that constant. And we normally use hash defined to serve this purpose. And it doesn't end with semicolon. Next is global declaration section. There are some variables which we call it as global, global variables, wherein it can be used or it may be used in more than one function. So in that case, we have to declare under global declaration section. Main section, main function is a very important heart of the program, I can say. It contains two parts. One is declaration part, the other one is executable part. In declaration part, we declare all the variables like end, float, we declare it, we define it, we initialize it. All those things are done in declaration part. Whereas in execution part, we will be having uh, the body of the code. Now, before I proceed, I just want you to uh, concentrate on some of the various uh, other some of the different ways of writing the the function so here you can just write simply the main which is which is equivalent if i write it as main into into the parenthesis wide the meaning of inside this parenthesis if i write wide then it indicates that no arguments here also it means the no arguments here we are explicitly indicating it and some other ways of writing it are int main whenever we write int in front of the main the meaning is this main function returns integer type so whenever you use this fashion of you know function writing make sure that you are returning an integer at the end if you are not returning anything then you have to write a command called return zero compulsorily and then comes wide main this and this is same this is not returning anything even wide main does not return anything main wide i have already discussed about it wide main wide so same as uh, earlier one int main wide it does not have any arguments but it returns an integer that's the meaning hope it is clear so now we will just take one of the important section which novel guns are also you know touched onto it i just want to compare between compiler and interpreter i i just don't want to define it or explain you about it because uh, sir has already done it so what is the difference between interpreter and compiler i have taken some cartoon to explain you so interpreter we we have we have used matlab tool the matlab tool comes up with an interpreter c language comes up with compiler so interpreter checks every single line of your code and it will 
execute if it is correct and it'll go to the second line if second line is correct it'll go to the third line if third line is wrong then it'll throw the error at third line so this person is helping this person by giving feedback at very often whereas compiler will you know will resemble this person you have to read whole of the code to decide about the code where the error is which line everything whole of the code should be written and then only we can use a compiler whereas interpreter it is not the case so the difference is clear please remember this difference interpreter and compiler now coming to the linker section so linker does a very important job in compiler whereas a link uh, in a c programming compiler a linker is a program that combines object modules to form an executable program source code for source file means c language c c program so you have written a c program now so compiler it will check the errors and it will it will generate an object file so once you are having an object file this is a runtime library or a header file so wherein the linker links this obg file with the header files and then it will create the executable program dot exe file this is how the linker section works now c language is a high level language everyone knows everyone of us know about it and you know the famous assembly language yeah, that you have learned recently 8051 and machine like machine language is a one which is very friendly to machine we call we, we also call it as low level language or binary language or zeros and ones it has only zeros and ones i just have a I have taken an analogy you know this person seems to be very unhappy because he is using a low level program because to write a code in low level language it takes i have taken a rough comparison it takes him to uh, around one year to write a program because everything should be written in terms of zeros and ones but once the code is ready the machine takes just a second to execute it so machine language or a low level language is more dearer to the machine whereas it is not friendly to the user whereas high level language you can see that this person is happy as all of us because we are fortunate that we have a high level program with us you know we can generate we can write a code within a one within a month to for some general application and but but it takes five seconds on machine to execute here if you consider there is some some you know um, comparatively you have less efficient because the it, it needs more resources you know when compared to machine learning language now we will have some operators discussion so we have a lot of operators like arithmetic operators logical operators relation operators assignment bitwise miscellaneous operator so on just go quickly glance quickly here okay. double equal to means equal to operator relational operator these all things are relational operator and these all are logical operator less than or equal greater than not equal all these things and when i use double ampersand double in um, vertical bar uh, and not logical not all these are logical inverter and these are bitwise inverter we have one operator used here one ampersand operator bitwise it operates on every bit whereas it operates on whole of the value that's the difference now comes the arithmetic operator we have plus minus star modulo and division operator assignment operator i want you people to concern more on this because there is more chance that we might go wrong here and more questions have been framed in during placement activities on the assignment operators so this is assignment operator we have a left left hand side and right hand side right hand side assigns its value to the right hand uh, left hand side this is a post increment this is called post increment unary operator this is called pre increment this is post decrement pre decrement and these all are assignment operators okay we can also write it in this fashion and here the meaning i have mentioned here I have written a meaning here assign x plus y to x assign x minus y to x these all things you already are aware of now i want to throw some light on note the difference between post increment and pre increment here i have taken a small example to uh, just to explain it int x equal to 5 int y y i am assigning it with pre increment x pre increment x then what will be the output output of x will be 6 output of y will be also 6 why because x has 5 before the assignment happens increment happens so you have two operators are there one is assignment operator and one is uh, what is this uh, pre-increment operator so pre-increment operator has the highest priority over assignment operator hence x becomes six 
and that 6 will be assigned to this. X also has 6, hence it is x equal to 6 and y equal to 6. The same code, if I change only this pre-increment to the post-increment, then the value changes like this. First, priority will be for assignment operator and then the priority is given to the post-increment. So x value will be 6 and y value will be 5 because before the increment happens, the value would have been assigned. Hope you uh, got the concept clear. Now, I have one more thing to tell. Don't confuse between single equal to and double equal to. The compiler uh, will warn um, against it, stating that suggest parenthesis. Here, I just want to quote one of the incident, true incident that happened in US. In some banking software design, you know, the, the in the code, in place of double equal to, single equal to was used, it, in, it seems. And because of which, because of which, because of this logical error, because compiler will not detect it. It's not a compiler error. It's a logical error. It will suggest a warning, I said. It is not an error. So in that case, your logic goes wrong. Because of which, you know, bank lost $20 million. Hence, this error is famously known as $20 million error. And I want to cite it. Um, I want to, you know, give the um, credits to Naul Gunsar because I got this information from Naul Gunsar. And I, I just uh, want to have... Uh, some example to make it much more clear to you uh, with single equal to and double equal to because these are some deceiving questions which where you might go wrong in your placement you know uh, entrances int x equal to 5 x is declared as 5 i am using a if else statement x double equal to 6 and it's a relational operator whether x is equal to 6 or not that i'm checking if it is false it will not execute. If it is true, the, the following comments, following uh, uh, statements will be executed. Now, what is the value of x? x is still phi because here I'm doing a comparative comparison, not assigning. Whereas in this case, in the second code, what I'm doing, it's not a relational operator. It's a assignment operator. Uh, of course, I have declared x equal to phi, but I have overridden it. I have overwritten with x equal to 6. So x is now 6. So hence, your x value is 6. Such questions you can expect in your in your placements. Now, basic data types uh, that we use in C programming are char, short int, int, long int, and few more are there. Float and double. This diagram shows what is a subset of what. Okay, And you can also easily you know, guess by this. Whereas here, char has a, a, a capacity to store 8 bits, whereas short int 16 bits, int, 4 bits. These all things I have written on the basis of some respective computer. Whenever you have been asked with some question like, what is the data stored for long int or int? Your answer should be system dependent. I repeat, your answer should be system dependent. If the system is of 32 bits, int, will be allotted with 4 bytes. If system is of 16 bits, it will be of 16 bits. If system is of 64 bits, it will be of 8 bytes. So it is system dependent. Please remember. And float, in some cases, it is typically 4 bytes. And in some cases, 8 bytes also. Again, it is system dependent. Double will be of 8 bytes. And uh, I, I just want to stress that here. Uh, int has the range minus 21474836, or else I can say 2 billion minus 2 billion to plus 2 billion. This is a range of the integer. Please remember that also. I have one small code here to explain you the operator called size of. So normally people confuse the size of as a function. It's not a function. Rather, it is an operator. Of course, it looks like a function, but it is an operator. OK, so here I am having a small function, a small uh, code wherein we try to display the size of all the data types that we have just now witnessed. So I just want to make it much more clear by taking this code in DevC++, which uses GCC compiler. You can use any of the compilers, but I normally prefer uh, DevC++ because uh, it's uh, very much user friendly. Uh, visible, our host, uh, Professor Kotre, sir, will alert me um, with us. You can just put your, you know, uh, if any issues, put put uh, please uh, post in the comment section. So I have taken the same code into the Dev C++. Hope it is clearly visible to all of you. What I've done here, I'm printing sizes of int, sizes of unsigned int, short, long, char, float, all these things I'm printing. I just run it. 
just run it. Hope everyone uh, knows here how to use a compiler. I'm using Dave's V++ compiler. Hope no explanations are needed. It is taking some time for running. You can just see here. Storage size for int is four bytes. Storage size for unsigned int is also same. Short is two. Uh, again, it is uh, repeated. Char is one byte. Float is four bytes. Double is eight bytes. Long double is 16 bytes. So this is how the storage allocation happens with the data types. So uh, I'll just get back to the sections. OK, now one of the important topic in basic C programming is type conversions or type casting, converting from one type to other type. So here, what we are doing is we are just taking the, the operands of binary operator must have a same type and the results is or should also be in the same type. Normally, we follow this. So what happens in the following cases, we'll just have a check. I am performing an integer division. Actually, I have taken a Celsius to Fahrenheit to Celsius conversion. Here, I am having division. I am concentrating on this division operation. Nine by five division process is carried out, wherein nine is of integer because I have not written nine dot zero and all. Five is also an integer. Integer by integer will definitely result your answer in integer. So there is absolutely no problem here. Whereas here. You can just check 9.0 divided by 5.0. Both are of float type. So your answer is expected to be of float type. And that's as simple as that. And in case, in case, I'll directly go to this example. If C is equal to 9.0 by 5, then what happens? Then the process that is happen, going to happen is called automatic type casting. In here, what happens is this is a float type. This is of int type. The this is, this is not of same type. According to the hierarchy, float comes next to it. I can say int is a subset of float. So this results in float type. Your answer will be 4.5 here. Here also your answer will be 4.5. What about here? Here your answer is just 4. Okay. So in both the cases, in these two cases, your answer is perfect, 4.5. So here I, I, I'm just telling you automatic or implicit type conversion hierarchy. It goes like this. Okay, so bool car int and tell long double. Okay, so just a diagrammatical representation. I'm going, I'm keeping, I'm going a bit quick, thinking that you are already aware of all these things. It is just like a you know, you know, trailer for exploring pointers in CRLs. I can say it's just a, a recap or revision of, of what you have studied already. So type conversion, I you know, uh, I just want you people to come up in the live chat uh, live chat like uh, so here I have some piece of code float f double d and long l int i and short s. So d plus f, what happens in this case? The result will be converted in what data type? It's a double i plus float. So result will be of what type? Come up in the chat box. Integer division divided by short, come up in the chat box. And long divided by i, that is int. So you can. You can just answer it in the live chats uh, until host, you know, sends me the comments. Uh, I'll not be able to. Yeah, uh, Srinidhi has responded it to it. Double. OK, that's correct, uh, Mr. Uh, Srinidhi. Thanks for your reply. Uh, it, it, it motivates us because, uh, you know, it should not be like one way speaking. Yeah. So now, so this, I'll display the answer here. So F will be converted to double. That's the correct answer. Now I divided by S. S will be converted to int. L by int. I is converted to long. So long integer. So here, the, int, the I'm telling about the conversion to the result. The explicit type casting is a very important uh, concept to be understood in today's session. So it is possible to force a conversion of an operand in this fashion. C is equal to, I'm taking the same previous code, wherein in the previous code, this part was not there. Previous piece of code. Float was not there. It is integer divided by integer. So integer divided by integer would have been given uh, the answer as 4. But that's not the expected answer. If you typecast it forcefully, we call it as explicit typecasting. And that, in that case, your answer will be 4.5. It, it will result in a perfect answer. Here, to just uh, um, for your analysis, I'll to explain the typecasting. I take this code, piece of code, into the DFC++. So what I'm doing is I 
would like to show you the importance of typecasting. So here I'm having int sum equal to 17, count equal to five. I'm uh, displaying the result in double mean. So mean is equal to sum divided by count. 17 by five results in, 17 by five results in three point something. Let us not worry what it is, three point something. But here it is integer divided by integer. So float type answer you will not be able to display. So I can show you that for you. Show you in the um, Dave C++ compiler. You can just check. Answer is not X um, will not result in correct. It is, it is 3.0, which is not correct. So to correct it, what I have to do? I have to typecast it. How to typecast it? She typecast it to float in the double uh, in the parenthesis and closed it in parenthesis. Now I'll execute the same code. You can check the answer is 3.4. Hope the concept is clear. Hope you understood the importance of the typecasting. Now type conversion. So one more example I have taken for the type conversion. So here what we are doing is I'm having a, a code in front of you. Uh, please come up with your answer in the live chat. Please come up with your answer in live chat. Till then I'll copy this code into uh, into the Dave C++. The code goes like this. Int A is equal to 1 billion. If I'm not wrong, three zeros, three zeros, three zeros, nine zeros are there. 1 billion. B is 3. Int is A and S. A and S has been assigned with A into B divided by D. B. B, B cancels. Answer is A. Um, if that is your answer, please come up in the live chat. Let me check what, what is your guess. Till then, I'll copy it to the Dave C++. So I'm copying the same code for you. But to our surprise, the answer that displayed here is not A or not 1 billion. It is rather minus 4316557 something else. It's, it's wrong answer. So how to correct it? Again, the answer is I have to typecast it. But the reason now is not justifiable because here, nowhere we have floating type. Now, 1 billion into 3 divided by 3 will always result in integer. Then why typecasting is needed? Typecasting has two advantages. One more reason for typecasting is if you are going out of the range, what is the capacity of int? Int range is a 2 billion something. You're crossing that. So here, according to the president's rule, A into B happens first. 1 billion into 3 is 3 billion. It is out of range. Hence, you're going wrong. So to correct it, to bring back, to give more space, it, space to it, I change, I typecast it to double. Now you can check. The answer is 1 billion. It's absolutely fine now. So typecasting helps in two ways, right? Remember it. It's not only to convert into float. It's also about the memory usage. So explicit typecasting. For that, you need to use double or even uh, the long double, whatever you wish. Now your answer is correct. Now next section is memory. So memory plays a very important role in every programming language. Unfortunately, as a programmer, we ignore to understand the concepts of memory. When you try for efficient programming, memory plays a very important role. Okay, so memory is just imagine it's like a big table or a big rack at your room, which will be having a lot of slots and you think that you're utilizing that slots to keep the book. Okay, so in the same fashion, the diagram shows that this is like a rack and uh, this is like a, you know, show, showcase or rack. We have a lot of uh, racks here and I can store the books, whatever I need. The number of slots is its address. If I'm having 10 racks in my room, it's like address, 10 address I'm having. If I am, I'm having 32 racks, I'll be having addresses of till 32. That's how it goes. And to um, just some, some logical data, uh, data type values, I can place it in the location of the respective address. Type names mentions or it, it, it means something with a span of the memory. For example, if it is a character type, then how much bytes are allocated? How much bytes are allocated for character? It's just one slot. Because one location or one storage location will be having one bytes of memory. So one character point character means it's one slot. 10 character means 10 slots. Integer means four bytes. So four bytes. Float means four bytes. Again, system dependent. Uh, every time I don't, uh, you know, I, I feel it is not needed to explain you every time. 
so you should uh, come up with, you should answer it as system dependent whenever it is asked now yes so here uh, these are the locations i'm i'm trying to you know uh, use uh, to uh, display the value store the value hello so it's a character it's a string so it has been stored in this fashion so it's equivalent as key code all the characters are stored in the memory with its equivalent characters now memory addresses these are the uh, some memory addresses that i have taken as an example so memory is divided in, into uh, you know one byte of pieces as i have already said so for example let us assume let us assume i'm telling i'm having a 32 bit processor how many addressable memory i'll be having i'll be having two raised to 32 bytes normally in recent machine again this answer is system dependent this answer is also system dependent let us assume for now let us assume that considering two raised to 32 bytes memory to uniquely identify each accessible byte how many bits are needed if you are, want to address these many number of locations how many bits are needed you need exactly 32 bits 32 bits machine means 32 bits address lines i can i can have two raised to 32 uh, address locations so in the normal case in recent machines again you can say answer as system dependent now we'll just throw some light on variable declaration with address variable names uh, a place in a memory whenever you declare a variable what it means it means you're booking a place it's like you're booking a seat in a bus a variable name books a place in a memory where you want to store data in a bus where you want to sit you book right in the same fashion the variable when you declare where it wants to sit that you have to decide okay so you first that will be assigned by the you know processor itself your os your, your, your first def you, you first define the variable by giving its name and then you can initialize it. Initialization is optional. I have taken one small example here. Char x, char type x, char is data type. It is not initialized. Whereas in the next section, y is initialized with a character e. In that cases, in the address, in the, in the memory uh, you know, racks, it looks like this. Address 4 is allotted with x x is a character type hence one byte one location y is again a character byte but, but it has been assigned with some initialized with some value which is e which equivalents x key code is one out one that will be stored there okay the same explanation has been provided here initialization initial value type and there is one one special uh, you know term that i wanted you to um, just go through it extern static constant what it means so think that I had declared something like extern static constant integer type some variable called my where or I think that the variable is I. The meaning it is it declares I as a constant variable. That's the first thing. It declares I as constant variable. Then it do not specify where the variable variable is allocated and what its value. That's the meaning. But linker will replace the address of the variable with actual address of the variable where uh, when it links the translation so this is some special kind of uh, uh, statements that can, you can use but right now you can ignore for simple programming okay. now multi-byte variables how to address the multiply byte variables it's as good as we discussed in the previous case i just continue with the where with the with the contents where with what i have taken in the previous case character type x character type y which is initialized to e now i'm having integer type z z is an integer variable i'm assigning some value some value i'm assigning so this value uh, occupies the address like this of course uh, uh, the the values are not matching in the memory and here uh, let us let us uh, assume that the value that you mentioned initialized for integer variable will take the spaces here take the values will be placed in the location respectively and this is again dependent on the processor like why 4 is placed first here why not one that might be the question in your mind i'll address that answer i'll address that question very in the very next slides and here you can see that padding there is a concept called padding in memory what happens is in a processor again it is system dependent think that is a 32-bit processor wherein a, a, a processor will allocate the memory spaces spaces in the number of fours in the number which is divisible by four four eight sixteen like that so when you are uh, declare character two bytes has been allocated but 
it has allotted four bytes when you declare character that is how the pro processor you know um, processes so when four bytes are there you have used one byte for character other byte of character is inserted here itself but two bytes are left when you declare a new data type so that we call it as padding for integer it is equal to four itself it is divisible by four so there is no problem at all for all the other cases it is not problem at all when it is uh, a short int or the character for 32 bit machine then padding process carries out very important concept now i am going with a process called with a concept called big endian and little endian method before i go through it let me tell you little endian format is used by intel processors little endian is followed by intel processors and big endian to give some example amd processor so what's the meaning of it big endian means the big end means most significant value in the sequence is stored first for example here the most significant value is what one is the most significant value it is placed in the it is placed in the least lowest storage address that's a big endian method little endian means least significant bytes in the lower address this is the lower address what is the least significant bit here 67 is the least significant byte so least significant byte will be assigned to the lower uh, address that is called little endian so example for little endian is intel now quickly we'll brush up through uh, the following uh, um, uh, statements uh, for loop um, i have taken some loop statements uh, for your uh, understanding here so for loop you know uh, one common question or simple question that can you know uh, come up or anybody can ask you regarding like what are uh, uh, how to how to generate uh, infinite loops how to generate a uh, infinite loops so these are some two ways i have shown you simplest ways where to generate an infinite loop for into the parenthesis two semicolon separated by a space that serves the purpose followed by semicolon that is also okay or or without semicolon even that is also okay to generate a infinite loop the meaning is there is no initialization there is no condition there is no you know increment or decrement operation so it falls in an infinite loop there is some small example i have um, you know taken just to explain you how for loop exam you know works to just a recap i i, I have already told that this session is building the basic kind of thing for exploring pointers in c because tomorrow onwards we directly start from pointers we don't talk about any such basic building or basics of c programming okay that's why with that intention we have we have taken it here and here uh printf scanf i can use only if i have declared uh, the header file as stdio.h int i have used here it means i need to return an integer if i don't have to return anything out of this main then make sure that you are using this statement return zero i'm using a for loop here this is a, a initialization count is equal to one this is a condition to terminate the loop statement and this this is incrementing post increment uh for you sorry pre pre increment even you can use decrement okay so here uh, this is assignment operator sum is equal to sum plus count this code is to calculate the sum of first and natural numbers you can compile it at your end after this uh, session and you can check okay it's a simple one i don't uh, feel that it should be uh, we need to explain this okay here the takeaways are these these are some of the ways of generating infinite loop some other ways to implement uh, infinite loop is for example you just have a check count is equal to 1 number you think you you might have entered phi phi is a number entered think that you have entered phi as a number sorry for my handwriting i am using mouse for writing it okay uh, so uh, phi is a number that i have entered and after every time it executes count increments till it reaches num once it reaches phi it will go terminates the uh, for loop think that if i just replace this with replace this with decrement count decrement then this condition will never satisfy right i mean this condition will be always satisfied this loop will never terminate hence in that case also it will enter a infinite loop that is one more case okay there are 100 ways to generate a infinite loop even this can be a question now the next loop statement to our uh, uh, focus is while loop while loop for loop do while loop 
these are some of the famous loop statements that we use in our C programming. Now the question comes, what to be used when? That I'll discuss just after these while loop and do while loop. So while loop, the very important concept about while loop is when do you generate, how to generate an infinite loop using while loop. To generate a while uh, infinite loop using while, while into the parenthesis, you need to mention a condition. When that condition is true, your while will execute. If that condition is false, while will terminate. Now to make it always true, what I have to do? Keep it as one. So by writing one indicates your while loops condition is always true. The meaning is it always executes, it enter, enters the infinite loop. Whereas, whereas what happens if I write while two? What happens if I write while two? So if at all, you know, you can just reply uh, in, in your uh, live chat. I, I can just, uh, you know, um, go through it whenever uh, after the session or I can answer it if you have any question. So whenever you have while of any non-zero value, take it any non-zero value, let it be two or minus one or minus 10, then still it is considered to be true. So while true case, your, your uh, while will enter a infinite loop. Now, I have taken a small code to explain while uh, infinite, one more infinite loop. Variable of integer variable, I'm initializing it to phi. While variable, I'm checking this with some relational operator. Condition is phi less than or equal to 10. So here, I'm decrementing this variable. Value is phi. Phi, if I decrement, it'll reach 4, 3, 2, 1, like that. Already, you know, it is less than 10. It goes on becoming less and less and less. So it means it enters a infinite loop. This is one more way of generating infinite loop. Now, what is the what is this uh, include? Uh, sorry, uh, int main while of minus one. It is again a infinite loop, as I have already mentioned. So this is one more no, not an infinite loop. One uh, code I have mentioned a simple code. Count is equal to one. Count less than or equal to four. One two, three, four other combinations that for which the while statement executes. So count goes on incrementing. So the output of this while loop is one, two, three, and four. Here, here I have taken a factorial number. Why I have taken this code? Because this is one of the most uh, favorable questions during placements. And it is not like write a factorial program uh, the question you might you know get it's like they will they will make you the question more specific yeah what is a writer program for the factorial uh, with recursion with functions with pointers uh, so like that your questions uh, will be uh, boosted but i have taken simple code here to just explain you the y loop so factorial code it is very easy to write i have initialized factorial equal to one now when i think that i have entered a number is equal to five Till the number, till this is true, phi is greater than zero. So I am decrementing here. You just see here. When I have entered phi, it should decrement because I'm 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 matching it with zero, which is less than the number entered. Hence, you need to decrement it. So what I have to do? I have to just the execution. It will be phi into phi into uh, one factorial is one number is five five into one five will be stored here in the next five into four 20 20 into 3 60 like that it goes on so it will be printed in the factorial next uh, in the do while loop in the do while loop uh, we have uh, one change compared to while loop so in the do while loop what what is the change is i'll just tell you that it executes at least one time. That's the only chain. It executes at least one time. And the conditions for infinite loop is same as before, earlier. So here, if even though I have mentioned it as false, while zero is a, is a false statement. It is false. It should not execute, actually. But in do while loop, it has to, the function pointer goes like this. The, the, sorry, the execution pointer. So first, it will execute this statement, pointer, printf, percentage d, count, count is 5, 5 will be printed, and then count will be uh, incremented. Then it will check for the condition. So condition is false. So hence, 
hence it will terminate so at least one time it is going to execute so this is uh, do while loop i have one uh, special statement here called break and continue so break and continue quickly i'll take it in the uh, dave c++ to explain you so break and continue are the special statements used uh, in a, in a uh, in a statements to perform certain operations let me just show it here in a quick face the quick phase i'll show it so i'm copying the same code um, i'm giving it its importance because uh, it gives you some idea regarding break and continue statement so i'm executing with a break statement what is here is this code is performs this code performs a division operation enter dividend enter divisor that's it if divisor is zero so you cannot divide you cannot have a denominator with a uh, zero because it will result in nan nan stands for not a number so in that case is print illegal divisor and i have used a break statement i am giving i am stressing on this number break statement what it does it will terminate it will go to the end of this end of this of uh, lower bracket or else i can say end of this statement it is conditional statement end of this conditional statement so you can say here i can uh, i'll just uh, enter a dividend enter a divisor to now it is working fine remainder it is displaying the uh, quotient it is displaying if if dividend is 5 divisor is 0 then what is the answer it is displaying it as illegal divisor and it is stopping it is terminating see it is not asking anything else illegal divisor it 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 just ends it but what if if i replace this break statement with continue just observe this continue will take the execution pointer to the start of the of the you know statement that you have called it phi now i enter zero so it displays it as illegal divisor but again it is asking for the new input enter dividend i enter it now i enter two now it displays it in the right fashion so this is the difference between continue and break statement so continue and break statements should be carefully used and these are very helpful if you want to go terminate and come out of that loop you just use a break statement if you want to go to the first statement of that loop go to the uh, use a continue statement i have one uh, question to you switch case statement since switch case statement uh, we use it as a case statement we have used similar kind of thing in html programming also wherein i have used a for loop i is equal to 0 condition is i less than 20 i plus plus i'm using switch label is optional switch i i is starting with 0 so when i is 0 case 0 will be executed so what happens here i is equal to i plus 5 0 plus 5 is i is equal to 5 then here what happens it will not come out of the loop it is c programming here it is it will go to the next next statement it will go to the next statement um so that is it will um, i is equal to 5 now so but it will not go to the 5 so it will be uh, it will it will go to the next execution that is case 1 so case 1 is i is equal to i plus 2 i value is 5 now 5 plus 2 it goes on and it will continue if you place a break statement here then it will end, uh, end the terminate the i'll come out of the loop so the output that we get as 16 and 21 so 16 and 20 and 21 how 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 uh, we get it i'll just show uh, the you know explanation for 16 how it, how uh, we get the 16 so 0 here 0 plus 5 is 5 5 plus 2 is 7 7 plus 5 is um, 12 and then 12 is it is covered in the default case 12 plus 4 is 16 16 is printed and it will go to the first line of the for loop 16 so 16 is still under uh, within the condition it is true it will increment 16 becomes 17 now so then what happens you can you can just decode it so this is how switch case statement executes now now the next topic of our consideration is arrays arrays and strings i don't treat these two things as different arrays you know it it is some set of integers i can say some set of float types i can say whereas strings it is set of some characters its array of characters is itself is a string so i consider arrays and strings to be almost you know subset of each other 
An array is a collection of variables of same type that are referred to, uh, referred to through a common name. The declaration goes like this. Type, you mention the type, int, char, even char is okay, and um, float and so on. Then give some name, i or a or whatever, then mention the size. If you don't mention the size, still it is okay. If you mention the size, it is good for efficient programming. Int a of six, it is an array of six variables. A of zero, a of one, a of two, till a of five, not a of six, zero to five. Double is a data type, d is a variable, 15 is 15, collection of 15 members in that array, okay? So which is of double type. So array initialization can be done in two ways. Static initialization, runtime initialization. You might be aware of these things. Static initialization means during the definition itself, you can initialize in this manner. See, here I have mentioned this uh, brackets with, with, uh, with no number entered. So in that case, you can just extend it till you wish. 31, 28, all these are integers which are stored in the array called month underscore days. Whereas runtime initialization is, think that I have a integer array, A of six, there are six members in it. Each members of array, I want to initialize. You can initialize it in any ways. I am using some code for it initializing. I have to use for loop, I is equal to zero. From there I start, till six I go on incrementing. So start from I, a, a of 0. A of 0 is equal to 6 minus 0. That is 6. A of 1 is 6 minus 1 is equal to 5. The num members that gets entered is like this. A of 0 gets 6. A of 1 gets 5. A of 2 gets 4. 3, 2, 1. It goes on. Now, how many bytes are allocated for this array? A of 6. 6 elements of integer considering 4 bytes, 32-bit machine for an integer type. 4 into 6, 4 into 6 will result in 24 bytes will be allocated, allocated when you define the array of 6 members. Now, how to read a member? Think that I want to read A of 2 in a temporary variable. Temporary variable. So then, this 4 will be fed or assigned to temp. Now, how to write an element? I want to override, I want to replace this 3 with 5. Then how to do it? It is by A of 3, assign it with 5. This is how arrays are taken. So more of this arrays uh, will be discussed in pointers and arrays. And more of strings are also discussed in po point, uh, um, pointers and strings. Here I'm just covering up the basics. String is not a keyword. Please remember it. Most of students confuse it with, as a, with, with it as a, as a keyword. But it is a, rather a function. There is some header file with the name string.h. Okay, but it is not a keyword. String is an array of characters, as I have already mentioned. So here, I can define a string like this. Char string, hello world. Or else the other way is char character pointer. You can read it as string is a pointer. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a character pointer or a point. It's a variable pointing to a character. More of this will be discussed in exploring pointers in C class. Here I'm initializing or initializing it with hello world. And see here, I'm, I'm showing you the address locations. The first location, H will be there. The second location, E, like that, till it encounters a null character. So null character you, is used for identifying that string has ended. Now, compiler has to know where it starts where the string ends, hence we use this null character, which is denoted by backslash zero. Some other uh, characters that we use in strings are backslash n, backslash t, backslash v, and so on. Now, I'll show you some interesting program, wherein we, I explain you how to display all the ASCII characters, printing ASCII values using C programming. Simple code, I'll show you what I've done. I've written a code with integer i for i have 256 ascii characters hence 0 to 255 total 256 what i have to print ascii character so here the character gets printed here it's ascii equivalent gets printed in both the case it's i what i'm printing okay so run it so you can see that in the compiler you can see all the characters printed 
ASCII character space is zero, uh, smiley is one, so on and so. You can use it. So K is 75, L is 76, and so on. So this is how the ASCII characters are printed. This is also one of the famous questions for placements. Okay, they, they ask you, what's the character equivalent uh, ASCII number for some, some funny character? They'll ask it. And you should use some simple code to identify it. Okay, so now uh, one of the important section that is structures. So array again on the, if I'm not wrong, on day four, we have a session called structures and pointers. So this acts as a basic for that session. So structures, syntax goes in this manner. Struct is a keyword. Tag means it's a variable, struct variable name that you want to mention. Then member list, what all members you want to have in it, and variable list. So this is the syntax of it. Any one of the three portions can be om omitted. You can omit either tag, either member list, or variable list. That is possible. I'm just showing you the various ways of using structures. Now, before we go with the structure, why structures are needed? Structures are very helpful when you want to combine the information of when you have heterogeneous members heterogeneous data types are needed for example if i want to have a student's details student details has serial number or roll number yeah, student details has a name has a marks so i need integer i need character strings so I, I have a heterogeneous data types needed then i can use the structures that's the importance okay now here i'm omitting the tag so tag is not there i have not uh, defined it as a data type now so i am de declaring it as a variable directly variable so this is also allowed the example is shown here okay so next omit variables now i have i have omitted variables i have not written any variables like x y and z here i'm just defining a data type i can say uh, with structure i'm defining a new data type called yes yes data type has integer a and b and then it has a character pointer called Okay, so this has no variables declared. Now I can separately declare the variables here. See, here I'm declaring Z. What is the meaning of Z? Z is a variable of what type? Z is a variable, uh, please uh, focus on this. Z is a variable of type struct S. Yes. What is struct S? Yes? Struct S has three members. One, two are integer type, one is character pointer. So this is how uh, we have, uh, uh, we use the structures. Okay, there is uh, one more thing, type def struct. So this creates a simple type name, yes. I don't want to use a struct. I, do, I, just, I just want to use this as int float like that kind of data type. Okay, so yes, if I want to use yes and z. In that case, I define it as type def struct. And in that case, I can just define it as yes, z. Most convenient way compared to struct yes. Here I have taken some analogy, some pictures, so that it is easy for you to understand. I have an array of structure here. I'm repeating array of structure means, see here, I am defining a structure here. Struct employee, employee is a data type. I'm defining a user defined data type of structure employee. It has got a different heterogeneous combination of members. Int ID, ID, ID is like roll number for students, ID is for employee, employee ID, character, name. Name, uh, I have mentioned only five, only with five, I can say it as short name, float salary, okay? So now I am defining it here, struct employee. Employee is a data type now. E EMP is an array of two members. It is of two members, structures, two st members of structures. So here EMP zero defines one of the structure, EMP of one defines one other, other structure. So here, each structure has the member, three members. One is ID, the other is character name, name, and the other is salary. Here also, think that we, 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 uh, me, and uh, uh, one more person one and person two are two employees working in some organization. So I am entering the details of person one in EMP zero. I am entering the details of person one, person two in EMP two. Now let us discuss about sizes. How many sizes are allotted to it? Considering int consumes four bytes, float consumes four bytes, character consumes one byte. Here, int four bytes, 
character how many character it's a array of characters that is a string actually uh, here uh, i mentioned it as 10 but it is 5 actually it's 5 hence i have taken it as 5 4 plus 5 again in, again float float is of 5 4 4 plus 5 plus 4 how much it is 13 bytes if i i am having array of structures two such kind of structures 13 into 2 is 26 bytes but there is one change here it is not as straightforward as this because i'm ignoring the fact that memory padding is ignored for simplicity now with cons by considering memory padding what happens to just recap i am showing you one more uh, similar kind of uh, you know structure i am having two character types here one integer type member so two character types consumes each one byte each one byte another byte but two places are left blank this is called padding because i said that processor allots your os allots four bytes of data or memory at a time whatever declaration you do whatever type declaration you do four bytes of data at a time it will give it to give it to you okay multiples of four i can say okay so here integer four bytes not a problem here two bytes is getting wasted it is called padding if that is the case then what happens in in the previous case in the same way i have taken one example i just want to ch check it uh, in previous case i had taken example of employee now i have i'm taking example of student roll number in place of id name i have, I have changed 5 to 10 and marks i'm entering the marks rather than salary here so in this case if i take this in dev c++ uh, let us check what is the size allocated to it size i'm checking the size of structure i'm checking the size of roll number how to uh, access the members of the structure yes is a structure variable yes dot role it means you are you are you are just targeting uh, accessing this member of the structure called stud yes dot role yes dot yeah i'm displaying sizes i'm displaying s dot marks sizes i'm displaying and its address also i'm displaying so once i run it you can see that size of structure is 20 bytes name of the roll num uh, roll number uh, it's four byte because it is of integer type size of name it is of string 10 characters 10 into 1 bytes it is of 10 bytes size of marks it is again an integer type 4 bytes 4 plus 10 plus 4 it should be 18 why it is displaying it as 20 20 because i said that processor allocates memory of divisible by four numbers like four bytes it assigns in the first case here it is asking for 10 it is demanding for 10 bytes but 10 is not divisible by 4 very next to it is 12 12 is divisible by 4 so in this case it allocates 12 so 4 plus 12 is 16 and next x again 4 16 plus 4 is 20 so 20 will be the byte allocation that has done given to this structure in the same way if i ask you uh, what is the number of uh, bytes allocated to the previous cases i have considered here four bytes here it is five but in, in case of five next three locations will be padded to round it up to eight so four plus eight is 12 12 plus four is 16 it is 16 bytes 16 into 2 is 32 bytes will be allocated to this array of structures now unions unions we normally don't recommend you to use but just to have a continuity i have checked, taken it just i'll concentrate on concentrate on differences between unions and structures so whenever you uh, use a uh, unions i'll take the next slide see i have a structure and unions of similar kind here struct yamp union m char x float y char x float y e e bo everything is same in terms of memory usage you can just check the difference this is regarding memory usage how many bytes of data will will be allocated here let us ignore padding let us ignore padding now okay so size allocated for character type is one byte size allocated for float float is four bytes assuming 32 bit uh, where float is allocated with four bytes so total allocation is five bytes one for care one for float whereas in union it is it is memory sharing the memory allocated for unions declaration is the maximum of the data types that you have used float is the maximum of these two things four bytes will be assigned for the unions y and x should share the same memory this is one of the drawback of usage of 
unions. Now, considering padding, uh, of course, you can guess the answer now. 1 plus 3 is padding, 4 plus 4, 8 bytes will be allocated it. Here it is only 4 bytes. This is one of the drawback of the unions. Size of union is the size of its largest member. Avoid unions with widely varying member size. For the larger data types, consider using pointers instead. So this is uh, one simple you know, uh, analysis between structures and unions. Now the last part of my session here is enumerations. So after this uh, um, section, uh, I, I, we will have some question and answer section if I have some uh, doubts in the comment section. Okay. So an enumeration, what are the enumeration? Enumeration are normally called as user defined data types. So it provides the data type with some set of values. And there is one interesting thing about this data type is that enumeration is an enumeration constant is a type of an integer. It's a type of an integer actually. Every member you you write in the enumeration will be assigned with some integer. I'll show you with an example. Enumeration can be used with indexing expression and you can also apply the operands such as arithmetic and relational operators. So enumeration can be used as an alternative to hash define. You will be using hash define in the definition um, declaration section that. So in that fashion, you can use user defined enumeration. In fact, it helps. It is more user friendly compared to hash define. Here are some of the ways to declare an enumeration. Enum is a keyword. Example type is a variable. User defined data type, I can say. These are the members of the data type. For example, what are the possible members of integer? They are minus 1, 0, 1, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 2 billion. It continues. What are the members of this example type data type? It is only 4. Red, white, black, green. That's it. And you can even create an unnamed enum also. This to just replace use of hash define. Okay. Normally we use this one. To continue it, think that I have used a, one more enum called test example. So test example is an user defined data type of type enumeration whose members are of 5, 1, 2, PS3, 4, 5. I said that, I said that each member will be assigned, assigned with integer type, integer value. So this is assigned with value of 0. This will be assigned with value 1. Now tell me what is what is the value assigned with phi? So I am questioning myself. I am answering. Uh, answer is also given by myself. It's okay. I hope you people are answering at your end. So it is phi. 0, 1, 2, 3. Sorry, not phi. It is 4. Starting from 0, it is 4. Okay. So now I am defining a variable called test1. I am initializing it to be PS3 because test1 is a variable of data type test example. It can have only data that is covered under the, its members. Nothing else out of it. So this is the enumerations. Now, before I conclude my, my session, uh, I'll just see you again in on day three of exploring pointer sensei. Tomorrow is day one, day three of uh, pointer sensei. And I'll come up with all these very interesting things. Other than these also, I have a lot of other questions. All are questions that have appeared in the placement section, in the placement process. All these questions. No questions are simple, simply taken. Every, every questions have, are, are taken from some other some or the other companies, placement aptitude or um, you know, programming test. Uh, some to to same uh, to name some are prime number, strong number, perfect number, and strong number, factorial, palindrome, swapping, sorting, pattern generation, and more of it. So we'll we'll see it all these things in upcoming sessions. Thank you. Let me check if you have any queries. And before that, I just want to conclude my session by saying this quote: "Do do it now. Sometimes later becomes never." If you people have not yet started with, you know, working on programming by practicing or not yet started preparation for GET, it's not late yet. Do it now. It's the right time. Okay. So with this quotation, I just uh, want to end my session. Uh, over to um, our host, Professor uh, Kotre, sir. I'll just check if you have any doubts.
Uh, thanks to um, Naulgun sir, he's answering some of the question. M I S R, Mistra stands for Motor Industry Software Reliability Association. Yes, sir, where unions are used. I have one question where unions are used. So unions, I said just now that unions are not recommended for using as structures, you know, dominate it. You can do whatever unions can do using structures itself. So there is no as such uh, things where places are, uh, you know, um, uh, reason for using only unions and where structures cannot be used. So that's why we normally recommend you uh, to use structures itself rather than unions. In some cases where memory is very much constrained, you are constrained, there is a constraint of memory. In that case, we have to intelligently use unions and it is quite risky to intelligently use unions. Any more questions? I hope you, I answered your questions. No other questions. I hope uh, uh, I hope you followed the session because the doubts are one of the way to, you know, understand that you have uh, understood it. So I'm waiting in the live chat. If you have any doubts, we'll take it or else or else I request host to just uh, tell them uh, the details of the next session. And during the next session, we'll be having poll questions after each session, like in every every hour, we'll conduct a poll questions and you need to answer it. You need to answer uh, the answer. The questions will be based on the sessions that we have uh, carried out. And after that, uh, we'll be having quiz at the end. But based on this poll questions, we'll be marking your attendance and your attendance on on the basis of your attendance, you'll be receiving your certificates. And the same thing will be forwarded to the placement officer, Miskin sir. So Vinayak Miskin sir have asked us uh, to share the attendance list. So, sir, uh, I have one more question. So padding may be applied to unions. Padding may be applied to unions. Definitely padding, you know, it is related to not structures. Rather, it is related to it is related to uh, processor, wherein processor takes care of it. Processor you know, allots four bytes at a time. Whenever you anybody requests the memory, either it might be a, inter, uh, a structure or union, whatever it is. But what happens with the uh, unions is unions allot will be allotted with the memory of maximum of the members that we have we have covered in it. We are, we are covering in it. For example, if you have double as one of the member, care as one of the other name member, then of course it will be allotted with double that is eight bytes eight bytes is divisible by four so no question of padding now think that you have only character types two character members you have in the unions so then how much bytes is allocated you have been allocated with two bytes but but for the next byte allocation if you request next byte of allocation in your declaration section like end definitely padding will be happening so two bytes for that union character which has only character types and then two bytes will be left for the padding and then um, the next declaration whatever you do will uh, the, the memory will be assigned in that fashion yeah uh, now Gun sir uh, have uh, just asked me like can you share some light on uh, uh, different compilers we have uh, so many compilers to work on uh, c uh, language yeah uh, if you are as as all of us are under lockdown of course we are working right now in the college most of uh, you are at your home uh, i'm happy that most of you have joined uh, who have made all the facility at your home but still if you are not having laptops still you can use a compiler there are a lot of online compilers are available a lot of compilers are available in your play stores if you are using an android or you know apple even ample uh, please download the compilers and work on it and if you have any queries, we are, we are happy to answer it. Online compilers are also very, um, you know, very, very good to work on. And normally we recommend you to use a GCC compiler. 
so in linux uh, platform uh, it is uh, you know for you uh, it will be a bit uh, difficult to you know follow or uh, for us also switching becomes difficult hence we have used dev c++ so gcc compiler in linux platform is uh, what we recommend and even you can use code blocks so code blocks is one more famous uh, c compiler that uh, we can make use of any queries any other queries if you have let me answer it and uh, one more thing uh, uh, one more question i am having sir please suggest any online platform to uh, practice coding uh, so for this my answer is just google it just google it online c compiler you will you will have lot many just try two or three and come to your own conclusion because uh, you know uh, the things the compilers what are comfort comfortable for me are not comfortable to navel gun sir uh, no, and the things what are comfortable for me uh, might not be comfortable to you also like right? so that's why you just type uh, online c compilers in google and you'll you just try with some two to three uh, websites uh, whatever is comfortable for you you follow that okay uh, even in your android for android phone you can have it but typing becomes a bit difficult so uh, even i recommend using computers okay any any more uh, doubts students uh, i'll be i'm verifying your youtube live chat i hope uh, have uh, answered all your queries and uh, you know c program is famously used in device drivers let me tell you one of my friend works uh, works in uh, device driver section in microsoft what he says is whatever work he does it will be patented it seems because whatever he work is doing it is it is newest thing or novel thing and it is getting patented a uh, device drivers section or writing a um, being a developer of code for device drivers is one of the most trickier one for device why i am mentioning this device drivers because device drivers can be written only if you have a sound knowledge on hardware as well as programming being an electronics background people we have that electronics as well as electrical people we have an edge or computer science people or or you know understanding the hardware we understand the hardware better comparatively okay i hope so right so in understanding the hardware and then programming is is one of the you know efficient way of programming hence we people are more means we electronics uh, engineers are electrical engineers are preferred uh, and even some of the computer science who are good across the platform are preferred for device drivers writing developers that is one of the very very uh, having very good scope outside uh, so shall i uh, shall we conclude the session shall i assume that you don't have any doubts so let us not worry if you have any doubts still you can post your questions in the whatsapp group that we have created for you and also you can ask your friends of other college also to join because till um, uh, when we created a whatsapp group and uh, registration we were not sure about uh, you know coming to the youtube live you know all google uh, uh, google meet uh, webex all um, online platforms uh, have some restriction that we can allow only 100 participants that's why we that's why we shared you not to share it with anybody else but still now you can you can ask your friends if they are interested to uh, you know join the live session and i have a question from shunidhi uh, while writing program for test test for test cases can we use structures um, writing test cases i assume um, you are asking about uh, test cases nothing but uh, i i'm i'm not uh, you know uh, following your question actually structures having any types uh, let me answer this meanwhile i request shrinidhi to elaborate your question one uh, still more um, so, uh, structures have any types you know structures are heterogeneous it is a it i i treat it as a heterogeneous type because structures has members of different data types i just now show you an example some three to four example have shown wherein the structure stood 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 stands for student student information has roll number roll number is of integer type and then uh, your name is of string type character character type and then your marks is of integer type here it is a combination of integer character and then integer it is a heterogeneous data type i can say okay structure does not have directly a data type when you declare a variable of any structure then we call that that variable is of type struct whatever name you have used like stud or student okay structure is not like any type it is it is it acts as a data type 
time. I hope I have, I have made it clear, Lakshmi. Uh, thank you, Shweta. Thanks for your appreciation. It will definitely motivate us to do better in coming days. Uh, Srinidhi, uh, I'll, uh, if you can elaborate your question, I'll answer it here or else you please uh, post your question in WhatsApp group. Uh, we'll definitely be happy to answer you people. Okay. And I'm telling you tomorrow at 1030 to 1230, we'll be having, we'll be having the first session of exploring pointers in C. We are starting up with basics of pointers directly uh, by Professor uh, Kotresh Marali, followed by Pointer arithmetic in session two by uh, Dr. S. S. Naval Gunsar. Okay. In fact, structure itself is a data type. Naval Gunsar answered it. Structure itself is a data type. That is what I, I said it to you. I hope no more doubts. Uh, I request our host, uh, Professor Kotesh Marali, to take the decision. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Srikant, sir, for uh, elaborative uh, explanation and uh, giving uh, more fundamental tips regarding uh, the C programming. I hope our students make best use of it. Uh, they have uh, they got to know about little more uh, about the fundamentals of uh, C programming. And uh, uh, once again, I thank uh, Professor Dr. S. S. Navalgun, sir and uh, Professor Shrikan Sirkol, sir, for wonderful session on, on uh, the career guidance and tips on programming. Uh, so students, tomorrow we will be meeting at sharp 10.30 AM. Uh, and uh, it will be starting with the uh, fundamentals of pointers. And further, it is going to be continued by uh, Dr. S. S. Navalgun, sir, with respect to pointer sign arithmetic. See you soon. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Be at home. And the link will be shared through the WhatsApp group so that you can join at sharp 10.25 AM tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, one and all. Thank you, sir. Uh, one more uh, important uh, point. We start one polling questions tomorrow with respect to today's session itself. And then we'll start uh, with respect to the session on pointers. Thank you once again.